Today we are celebrating the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul the Apostles. Um, our entrance hymn is For All the Saints. It's in your music issue, number 708, if you have it. And um, I guess we're ready to begin, so please stand. Friends, welcome to our first liturgy, open to the public. Qué gusto, especialmente en este día de la solemnidad de San Pedro y San Pablo. What a joyous occasion, what a marvelous day to begin our celebrations together. Truly grateful to God to see all of you here. Now that I can see you, all this time you could see us, but we couldn't see you. Pero ahora, en esa unidad, en esa comunión, a nuestros corazones se regocijan al estar en esta santa comunión. Let us pray to our loving Father that he may continue to build up the body of Christ and continue to help us to build up one another. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. Jesus Christ, only begotten. 
mountain sun. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul. Give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and is God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was a feast of unleavened bread. He'd had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four quads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Yeah. 
angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loosen on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you feel a little strange coming back to church, like if we're having to learn to ride a bike, from the moment that you enter the outside and they're asking you questions, right? And then they take your temperature and then you come in and then they tell you where to sit down. <laughs> it seems very strange, but it's a reality of what we are all dealing with um, and maybe new to us coming to church. I think all of us have already had this experience, ¿verdad? Cuando vamos a Walmart, ¿verdad? Una entrada por donde entrar and uh, be able to then, uh, well, not only uh, check our temperature, but also to wait outside if there's too many people. There's all these conditions that we're all under and it's also impacting us here. Yet I'm glad to see all of you. I'm so happy that we are able to come together once again. Um, we've been celebrating Mass every day and present you in our hearts, of course. And of course, with that with that reality that we're all united by the love of God present to us. But very different when you're not present. Very different. Take it from this perspective of a priest celebrating Mass without people. I've never had that experience in my life. Not once, much less for months. It's not the same as I'm sure your experience from watching us on your computer or telephone or television, I'm sure it's a very different experience. Today is this solemnity of Peter and Paul, and I'm just amazed to tell you the truth, I'm just amazed that someone like Pope Francis at his age, not only to be still the Bishop of Rome, but the Vicar for Christ. I mean, I can barely sometimes make it in a small parish like Blessed Sacrament, and I'm so much younger than he is. I just admire him 
for his stamina. Because he's not just, you know, dealing with parish issues. He deals with worldwide issues. With leaders from all over the world. And, and on top of that, dealing with the pandemic. And his own diocese. But to shepherd all of us. And it's not just Catholics, right? He stands up for the Muslims. He stands up for, you know, those of different faiths, for the Jewish people, for non-believers. He's a bishop and priest for the world. Not just for those who come to Rome or come to his, you know, own parish at St. John Lateran or there in his basilica at St. Peter's. He is a priest of the world and a bishop and a shepherd for anyone that is being oppressed or in need. He speaks up for us. No matter how close, how far, no matter our religion, no matter our race, no matter our creed, even if we don't believe in God. He is truly a vicar for Christ how Christ would minister to everyone, regardless. And I just admire him for what he does. And I think, my friends, too, that on top of being the vicar, a representative of Christ himself. He still deals with all the criticism that we throw at him. All the gossip. All the negative, ugly words that we so easily throw at not just the Pope, the Vicar of Christ. Y tan fácil nos salen las palabrotas. El criticarlo. And he deals with all of that with prayer, with compassion, with silence, with tenderness. Not lashing back, not criticizing anyone, no matter how close or far. He deals with all of that truly like a representative of Jesus himself. It's interesting that they place Peter and Paul together. Because much like we criticize the Pope today, I believe that if we were to study them in depth, we would see Peter and Paul really more like water and oil. These were two brothers on the journey of coming to know the Lord. Very different tracks, very different men, very different personalities. And yet I feel that, you know, if they could do it, then we certainly can also. It is by the design of our Heavenly Father that these two very distinct personalities come together. Uh, we all know their story, right? Saul, a Pharisee. Saul was very proud. Saul was, came from a wealthy family who had their own business of making tents. Uh, 
Saul is a commander. He demanded respect and recognition, while Peter, on the other hand, a fisherman, very humble, a nobody, just blue-collar guy in a very small rural town that he fished. Two very distinct individuals that by the grace of God came together and we call them the pillars of our faith, the pillars of the church. And although they had their differences in how they looked, they worked together, not against one another. Paul respected Peter's responsibilities and his position in the faith, and Peter also respected his brother to listen to his argument, to listen to his complaints, to listen to his different opinions that he had. And in spite of their differences, it is always, always by means of the Holy Spirit, by means of their prayer, indeed by their faith, that they walked together in communion. And I think that that's one of our challenges that we have as a church, is that when we think of unity, we mistaken unity for uniformity. That is, everybody has to think the same. Much like peace, we think of peace as the absence of conflict when it's not true. Because a lot of the times, the person that is a peaceful person will always be a person that was always being attacked. A person who always finds himself in conflict. But their peace is with God. And it is a peace that they bring to others that they often reject and don't want to hear about it. And so let's not confuse our unity in the church for uniformity. Because these two individuals teach us a great deal, my friends, about being united in the faith and working to build up the body of Christ in spite of our differences, in spite of our unique ways of looking at the world or looking at our own life. One came from a small town, the other was a big city guy. And it wasn't their own personality or beliefs that they were pushing, but rather always trying to understand, what is God calling me to do? Or as Jesus puts it before Peter, who do you say that I am? Or as Paul would say, I am being poured out as a libation for the Lord. Each of them, my friends, speak in that uniform way. Different, yes, but uniform in that they are proposing to the world the same message. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the one that I follow. You are the one that I'm willing to die for. You are the Lord and Savior of the world. They each propose from their own perspective the same truth. And that's what brings them together to work together, not against one another. And to look at and refine anything that tries to divide them. And to see, well, what unites us, rather? What brings us together? What do we believe in? If there are so many Christians in the world, we should be the image of Christ 
to one another. But not just to other Christians, to everybody. Regardless of creed, race, religion, or no religion. They stand as a witness, my friends, that their faith is more than words, more than what we babble when we profess our creed. I believe, I believe, I believe. What do those words mean if they remain just words? If they don't take flesh, if they don't take an action? As we come together today on this solemnity, my friends, let us realize that our words have to mean something. Our words have to transform us, change us. We have to allow the word to penetrate our heart, our soul, our church, to change us. And to be careful that my words do not change you, because my words mean nothing. There is only one word, and that is the Lord. And that is the one that we must profess. And that Lord who conquered sin, and who conquered divisions, and who conquered death, is the one that must be professed, the one that we must speak constantly time and again and repeat it time and again so that I can be the first one to listen to the words that come out of my mouth and be convinced of these words so that I can be the first one to change. Who do we say that Jesus is? How do we say it? If our mouths were truly shut, would the world know Jesus? Would anyone know who Jesus is because of, of our actions? Because of our peace, our kindness to one another, our compassion, our tenderness. Because of our love and forgiveness. May these men continue to speak to us in our hearts. May their lives that profess, indeed, Jesus is Lord of heaven and earth, reveal to them, not by nature, not because they studied, not because they were learned, but gifted by the Father. That is, they had a heart to listen. They had a heart to be taught. They had a heart that was malleable, willing to change. May we also have such a gifted heart, a blessed heart. You, Lord, are the Christ. You are my Lord, my Savior. You are everything to me. Help this hard heart so that I can profess you now with my life.
And so we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident, my brothers and sisters, that the Lord hears the plea of those who cry out to him, we pray that the ministry of the Pope, the successor of Peter, may draw the church to unity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. That all who share Paul's missionary ministry may proclaim with joy our salvation in Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who do violence may experience God's transforming grace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who have betrayed the trust of others may repent and seek forgiveness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. That the sick may find hope in the apostolic witness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Our intention for today is all souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the dead may rejoice forever with Peter and Paul and all the saints, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. It is also prayed to the Lord for an increase of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray to the Lord, ever mindful of all our sick brothers and sisters, especially those who are suffering with a coronavirus, that the Lord may heal them and protect and provide for their families. We pray also for doctors and nurses in the forefront of this battle, for our peace officers or uh, those first responders and uh, those in, um, who serve as in the fire department, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of goodness, in Peter and Paul you show forth your bountiful grace. By their intercession, renew your church in unity that we may proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, and so bring glory to your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is uh, 326 in the music issue, Ubi Caritas, 326. Oh, 
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter foremost in confessing the faith. Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each, in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. Therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting the pure sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and ready to greet him when he comes, when ready to, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Peter and Paul, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation throughout the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy and religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you, and in your mercy, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admins to your kingdom. There we hope to share, and to, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us together, my friends, in our hearts and in our voices, unite our plea to our Heavenly Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and in your mercy grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Before we move on to communion, I'd like to remind you that we have a new uh, order for communion. All those seated in the center pews will come out to the center aisle, keeping the distance of six feet from one another, and then come up to the two Eucharistic ministers. So there's going to be one lane, just like the hospitality ministers are doing for us right now. And when you come up, then you either go to the left or you go to the right but everybody in one lane. Those on the sides, we're gonna ask you to exit towards the wall and come up for communion and then return going in the same direction as those in the center pews so that there's no uh, crossing of people. No one's coming, the other ones are going. We're all moving in the same direction, okay? And please remember, we're only receiving communion in the hand. Okay, thank you. Behold, this is the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 725 in the music issue. Blessed are they, 725.
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that, persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I know that this is a weekday Mass, and usually uh, during the weekends, uh, we want to know if there's anyone celebrating birthdays or anniversaries. But today we have a couple actually with us celebrating their wedding anniversary uh, Jose and Natalie. ¿Cuántos años de aguante? 35. Pero lo más uno han aguantado. Todos los demás, puro amor, ¿verdad? Felicidades. Let us uh, congratulate Natalie and Jose. Can I offer you a blessing? Sí, pasen. I invite the rest of the community to extend your right hand over our friends Natalie and Jose. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your love, Lord. At every moment that we recognize how much you love us through friends and families, but especially in our own families, through our parents, brothers, and sisters, and through this wedded couple. 
We praise you, Lord, for the many gifts that you have bestowed upon them, especially uh, Dominic, their son, and bringing their lives together, Lord, through many challenges. And yet, Lord, it has been by your grace that they celebrate today this grace of 35 years of, of married life. We pray, Lord, that you may continue to bless them, keep them healthy and strong, but especially in your love to encompass their every day, Lord. And as they continue to mature in that beautiful love that you bless them with, may you continue also to provide for them. The Lord bless you, my friends, and keep you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Un abrazote, un besote a los dos. God bless you. Happy anniversary. Beautiful. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ahora para salir. All right, so let me give you some instructions. Uh, we have our hospitality ministers trajeron su canasta in the event that you brought your Sunday collection. Yo sé que muchas veces prefieren traer su diezmo en mano, ¿verdad? So if you brought it with you, you can drop it off now. Eh, no es colecta de semana, ¿verdad? Es más una conveniencia que les estamos ofreciendo. If you already gave your Sunday collection, then that's it. Uh, but they're going to be here in the side doors. Um, we ask you when you exit, don't use your hands. Usen su espalda, your back, to exit the door. Y así no tenemos que tocar la puertita. And uh, trying to use as much as possible to keep uh, from touching things. Know that we disinfect the entire church, all the pews, las que se usan y no las que, las que no se usan. We disinfect them every day. And uh, we try to keep everything very much clean. So thank you so much for coming to our first Mass. Dios me lo siga bendiciendo. We're going to have Mass here again tomorrow. God willing. All right? Mañana otra vez a las seis toda la semana until we come out of this pandemic. That way more people can come in the evening than in the morning. Right? We'll always have it at, five, at six o'clock. The church will be open at five. So you can come for prayer. Tomorrow's Mass is in Spanish and then English and Wednesday, and so on and so forth, the way we used to have it, ¿verdad? And let's thank our choir here, beautiful choir, for accompanying us too. And in the event that you haven't met Astri, Astri is our seminarian intern. Vamos a darle una uh, mano también. Gracias, Astri, por acompañarnos. Bueno, enough talking. Closing him. Let us sing. Let us sing and uh, praise the Lord. Closing him is number 607, Sing with all the saints in glory. Six zero seven. Sing with all the saints in glory, sing the resurrection song. Death and sorrow, earth's dark story to the former days belong. All around the clouds are breaking. Storms of time shall cease. In God's likeness, people waking know the everlasting peace. Oh, what glory for it! Thank you.